There are a ton of tutorials out there on how to paint golden armor, but most of them follow roughly the same scheme of gold base coat, wash with regular flesh shade, and then highlight. In this video though, I'm going to do something a bit different and use green and blue paints to get a worn, aged look, which I think is perfect for this custode squad I'm currently painting. To start with, I base coat my models with decayed metal from scale 75. Now, you might be wondering why there's already gold on this model when I say I'm doing a base coat here. And that's because I bought these models secondhand and they're already spray painted gold. But instead of priming them again black and risk obscuring some details, I decided to just paint over the existing base coat. This channel is nothing if not professional. Next up, I take one of these cheap makeup brushes I bought off Amazon and liberally dry brush scale 75 Victorian brass over the entire model. This is a reddish gold color that I find myself using frequently. Honestly though, for this recipe, the exact colors don't matter as much and you can absolutely get similar results using Games Workshop or Vallejo paints. When dry brushing with these makeup brushes, I've actually found them a lot easier to use than official dry brushes as their soft bristles allow me to just kind of flick the dry brush over the entire model and get a nice layer of paint on their highest details. Otherwise though, they work exactly the same as other dry brushes and I just dunk my brush into the paint wipe off most of it on paper towel, and then brush it over my model to hit all the raised edges. For this dry brush step, I do go a bit heavy on the dry brushing, as I'm really looking to build up the mid-tones on the model instead of just pure highlighting. It's a little hard to show how I do this on camera, but all I really do is use a tad more pressure than normal and apply a few more passes than I would if I was just doing this for a highlight, as you'll see me doing later on. Once the entire squad is dry brushed, I move on to shading with Games Workshop Colia Green Shade. I know this is a bit unorthodox, but I really like how the green contrasts with the warmer, reddish tones of Victorian brass and helps add a kind of patina look to my models that give them an aged, worn metal appearance. When applying this, or any shade paint from Games Workshop, I found it extremely important to not flood your model, as this stuff can obscure details and leave behind way too much color. Instead, I make sure to remove most of the shade from my brush and then paint it on as I would a base coat or a layer, evenly over the entire model, but I'm careful to make sure it doesn't pull or get too thick anywhere. When I do apply too much though, all I do to fix it is just dip my brush and spread it out some more of the model. Also, I'm using the older formulation of Colia Green Shade here, but the new one should work just as well. This is because I next dry brush Victorian Brass over the entire mini once again, just like before. This leaves the green shade in the recesses, but starts to add some red tones back into the model, resulting in some interesting but subtle color contrast that I think looks really good and helps to make the models pop from across the table. Next up, I do one more pass of dry brushing, but this time I'm looking to only gently apply some highlights using Scale 75 Peridot Alchemy. This is a pale, light yellow metal that I just love the look of as a finishing highlight. I don't know why exactly, but I find it gives a nice final pop of color to the scheme and actually cools it down a bit. When doing this step though, I use a much lighter touch on my dry brush than before, as I'm really only looking to highlight the edges of the armor and not add in a mid-tone across the entire model. The model is looking pretty good at this stage, and you can absolutely stop here, but I wanted this armor to look truly ancient, so I turned to a turquoise glaze to add some verdigris and patina to it. If you're not familiar with glazing, all it really means is you take paint and thin it down with water until it's fairly transparent. I'm using Caribbean Blue from Scale 75 and simply add a drop onto my palette and then just thin it down with some water from my paint cup. I don't have an exact measurement of paint to water here, but you want to get to the point that it's pretty translucent and looks more like dirty water than the opaque paints you normally use to layer. I carefully apply this glaze in the recesses of the armor. This glaze is not applied like a wash or shade, and I'm much more careful and try to only get into the deepest parts instead of covering the entire model. Your brush strokes also matter here, and I want to try to end your stroke in the deepest parts of the marine's armor. This is because when your paint is this thin, your brush will actually deposit more at the end of its stroke than the beginning, and it will be ever so darker there. So by being more intentional with your brush strokes, you can get some nice gradients built up quite easily. When this glaze is first applied, it'll look far more blue than you'd like, but as it dries, it'll become more and more transparent and darken up the metal while leaving a slight blue tint behind. It does take a little bit of trial and error though, 
to know what the right consistency is and how much to apply on your models. But in the end, there is no right answer, and by experimenting with this technique, you'll find something that works for you. If though, you do end up applying too much paint, and it looks way too turquoise for the effects we're going for, you can always either wipe some of it away or dilute it further with a little bit of water on your brush. On the flip side, if you're not getting enough coloration or contrast for your taste, you can always apply more layers of this glade to build up the effect and add even more color variation and contrast. Just make sure that the previous glaze layer is fully dry or else you can actually tear or pull up the layers of paint you've already applied. This is absolutely the most time consuming step in this scheme, but because the paint is so thin, you can afford to be a little messy here as well, as unlike painting with fully opaque paints, any errant brush strokes aren't immediately noticeable. Because the turquoise paint I used is matte, it will actually dull down the metallic look of the previous layers and add some really awesome contrast between the matte shadows, where the turquoise is the strongest, and the shiny highlights of Peridot Alchemy, where the turquoise didn't touch. To really push this contrast even further though, I find that a few small highlights of Peridot Alchemy again really help to build back in any luster lost with the matte paint. That pretty much finishes up the gold on these models, but there's still a long way to go to finish the squad. So in my next video, I'm going to show you how I painted their red half capes, utilizing one of my favorite techniques, sponging, to add some texture and interest to the cloth with minimal effort. For now though, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you'd like to see more like this, or have a suggestion for a tutorial you would like to see, please let me know in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching and hobby on.